Hi, this is the fellow passenger. Today we're going to talk about bass lines. But before we start, I would just like to draw your attention to this. Point Source Arts is the label that I'm associated with and Point Source Arts have just released a new massive compilation with amazing IDM tracks. And if you look at track number one, The Fellow Passenger. So if you feel like supporting the label and supporting me, I think you should go and check this out. I will make sure to put a link in the description. Now, when the first part of Shameless Self-Promotion is over, we're going to talk about bass. We are back in Ableton. This is going to be somewhat improvised and not very scientific. But to start with, to make a good bass line, or how I make try to make bass lines, I want to separate the process out a little bit to make it a bit easier to construct. But one good thing is to choose a scale. There are a few ways you can do this. Either you spend a huge amount of time thinking about what scale you want to use, or you don't do that, you just pick a scale. So I'm going to pick D minor. The other thing you can do is not picking a scale at all, but then you might stumble upon things further down the line when you're trying to write complementary melodies, etc. But Ableton is good because if you don't know much about music theory and you don't know all your scales by heart, it's fine. Just go up and pick a scale here. There are lots of scales to choose from. Um, and then we're going to try to make some bass lines. I've taken the operator. Uh, so now when you see these, like, these are purple. Uh, I don't think you can pick the scale up here in Ableton 11. So if you don't have that, you can, you still have this down here. It's the same sort of thing. So you can choose your scale there and they will be come up purple in Ableton 11. The other thing you can then do, if you click the scale button here now, that removes all the notes that are not in the scale. So you can pretty much draw anything in here and it's going to sound somewhat all right. But before we change this, when you're choosing your scale, if you want to write cool melodies that are so cool that you want to put sunglasses on, then you might want to look into a scale where there at least some at some point is just a half tone interval and what what it means by half tone is literally that you just go one key up or down so here you see this is a white key that's the black key that's not purple but here between e and f those ones are right next to each other so that means a half tone step and that is an interesting way of creating tension. Don't bother too much about this for now, but uh, it's maybe something that you wish to uh, play around with. The next step of writing a bass line, and this is something that I adopt quite often, is if you divide up the, the notes of the bass, but also the rhythmical interval of the notes, because I think both of those are very important to create the right feel. So how I like to do it is just to get the rhythms of the rhythm of the notes down first without necessarily having to try to solve the melody at the same time. So as we've picked a scale in D, let's just put some notes in on the key of, like the D key. Um, I'm going to make a slightly more dynamic bass tone than this. I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on the bass sound design right now. Uh, what can we do? And we can have a little bit of envelope on the filter. That will do for now, that will do for now. I have to go lower, I think. That's too low. Oh, 
Let's do that. So to create, I'm just going to draw some notes out now and then we adjust them to get a baseline that feels right. So let's just do one notes just to get a, something that feels rhythmically interesting. It's not too bad, but 84 BPM, that's not what we need today. We need something faster. We need a cup of coffee and we need to speed up the track. And if you followed my channel, we're going to probably do something which eventually goes a bit more experimental, but that's fine. Let's just... And as part of the rhythmical pattern, you may want to have notes that are slightly um, longer. Let's say that we like this rhythmical content. Now we can start embellishing this either by moving some of these notes. Let's fold this or click on scale so we just get the notes from the scale. And now we can start embellishing this either adding extra notes in So it's very old school, this. The other thing I forgot is that we probably want this in mono. Bass is, uh, well, yes, we do want it in mono, but uh, monophonic, so we don't get overlapping bass tones because bass chords tend to sound a bit muddy. The other thing is the length of your pattern, depending on what music you're going for and how complex and dominant you want your bass line to be, I suggest either go for one bar, two bars or four bars. It's quite a, uh, maybe start with two bars and see how we get on if that feels too long or too short. A four bar loop can be interesting if you literally want to go through a different progression where you sort of change, change the, the root of the bass line. So you can have them the same, but maybe we can have some extra embellishments right at the end. Sounds quite vanilla, that bass line. And again, depending on what genre you're going for, but if you, if you want to make something that's going to, something that's going to feel a little bit more dynamic, so you're not stuck in a very static loop, you, probably want to make your bass line sounding a bit dynamic. You don't necessarily change the rhythm or the melody, but you change some other aspects of the sound. For you who have been following my channel, you know that I'm a great enthusiast of expression control, which is a great way of generating random values. If you're absolutely new to this channel, uh, I'm just going to show, show you what I mean. So I've got the expression control set up here. I've got all of them set to random by default. So for example, if I change operator two, we can do that with uh, the second random and we change the time of the... That is one way of doing it. And maybe some of the things you want to have completely random, but to allow the listener to lock on to certain things with their brains so they 
adjust themselves to the loop, which makes it the more opportunities you give the listener to lock onto something, the further away from pure noise you will get. And you will probably want to get that balance right because it's nice to keep some elements completely random within reason. But you can also do other things like, obviously you can go into here and you can go into envelopes and you can draw in envelopes for your um, automation of the filter or like we did there, we changed the time or the level of the second operator. But you can also use... Um, Max, other Max for Live devices other than expression control. I just want to plug one of mine again that I did a video on last week. It's still fairly new and it's something that you can get if you sign up to my Patreon, which uh, depending on how you see it, it's extremely low cost for quite a lot of good resources, especially if you want to make a glitch and um, IDM type type stuff. What am I trying to type? Parsec, that's what it's called. And it's not a plugin, it's a Max for Live device. This is like a little sequencer, but it's not sequencing the melodies, it's sequencing parameter changes. So we can add this to the time, for example. Oh, I turned that down all the way. And we can do this to other things as well, like... Um, let's make this slightly fewer steps and maybe somewhat slower. So as you hear now, the, the bass line, even though it's only two bars long, it sounds more dynamic because we are modulating some of the values. And as I've done with some of these, where it goes for one and a half bars um, rather than one bar, the you will get a bit of syncopation on the level of oscillator, or os not oscillator B, but the <sighs> operator B. And you can obviously use this to uh, modulate some nice things like sending stuff off to the return channels. While I'm at this, I just want to talk about my little trick for the, this is the default reverb that's on return channel A. I'm going to make this a default, I've got it as a default on my laptop, but not on this computer. Take the reverb, set it to complete mono. You just turn stereo off. And when you select it and hit uh, Command G, you put it in a group and then we duplicate that. So we get two of them. One we pan hard left and right, or the other one right. Well, I said it the opposite order, <laughs> one right and then one left. And you make the settings just slightly different. And we can maybe, we set the quality to high as well. Uh, we make sure we cut out some of that low end. And it's good if these are actually slightly different from one another, because that's going to make the signal different in either ear. And that's nice. one base we can then let's just mute that channel we can keep that there for the moment and let's make another base so something which that's that's still it's it's in a particular key 
but it's quite percussive and somewhat abstract. So if you want to do something with maybe a bit more melody, let's take a wavetable this time. And let's make a bass sound out of this. Matrix, we map envelope two. The frequency, and we have to turn the frequency down to actually, to actually hear the effect. And we change the amp envelope a bit. We still have our D minor key, uh, so let's just draw in some nice notes here. And again, we can... Actually, we just stop off. With... So if we want to do something that feels a bit more melodic, let's set this to four bars. And as a start, we do each bar. And we need to set that to mono again, I forgot. Set to mono. We don't want any overlapping notes. So we're keeping this very simple. We just do, per bar, we just do one continuous note. We're going to embellish that in a moment, but we start off easy. Maybe we want to go down, go really deep. we can spice it up. Let's start making some variations. So the, f the, the last bar, the half, we go down again, but then this one can actually go up. Maybe. And it's an interesting thing that if you change some of the notes towards the end of the bar, it somehow reminds the listener that the bar is coming to an end and they can expect a change. So if you do that on the last quarter note, just do something. something you can experiment with. So now as we got this set to scale here, we can move these around in any way we like. And it's not gonna sound wrong at least. It might doesn't sound it might sound uninteresting, but it's not gonna sound wrong as in uh, out of key. this is going to do but as we are changing the last bar halfway through we may want to use that trick that towards the end that we want to change some of the notes so the more embellishments you do you can create some quite interesting changes Maybe you can just try to make something logical that we just do every third note. I don't know how this is going to work. To create a little bit of, again, about the human brain, that you create a little bit of a logical pattern that allows your brain to understand what's going on. Quite interesting. Maybe 
we can do this slightly differently. So we do that one like that. Let's take that and add a little bit of movement to that. Maybe we can have a bit of expression control here. We tame it a bit so it doesn't go the entire range. And uh, we can maybe do that. One. that to the resonance. Not quite. And then we can take another parsec maybe, which is quickly becoming my new favorite plugin to map maybe the position of the oscillator. Okay, let's call that one done and we make another MIDI track. Where have you gone, my little babies? Uh, let's just mute that one for now. No, I don't want to be there, I want to be here. Why are you not showing? I can't remember how to do this. I haven't learned all this stuff yet. What? I want to see volume. That's fine. Let's grab another synth and then we make another bass line because we need to look at slow basses as well. And then we can go a bit more abstract. So let's do meld. still got our key so let's go down to so what I mean by slow bass is not really um, a slow BPM it's just maybe less notes but they are maybe a bit more dragged out And you can change them, change them over time. Let's go into the matrix of meld, massive matrix, filter, and we want the modulation envelope to maybe have a negative value, so it will filter up. The same if we connect those envelopes. Will that work or do I have to do that as well? That's a very clean filter. Oh gosh, I've forgotten to test all these comb filters we have there. Let's 
let's do a two bar loop. Gosh, this is crazy. I need to look into these more. Absolutely fil filter. Sometimes you might just want to have that pulsating, very basic bass melody. <clears throat> and not to forget that don't constrain your synthesis to just the synth itself. I think effects can be absolutely part of the synthesis. It's sort of, when do you draw the line? When does it stop being the core synthesis and the sound design and yeah it's blurry but who cares so let's take an LFO and we map that to the amount and I want this to be um, we have another LFO at a different speed maybe slightly faster and we map that to the milliseconds <laughs> actually if we set that to being a dial triangle and we hit this little note because then it's going to run in time with the track and we set it to um, eighth notes maybe one can be no this one needs to be slower we set that to quarter notes and this one can maybe be eighth note like the idea of creating that rhythmical pattern so if we take the uh, auto filter and we set that to a down match it to the tempo can you hear that stuttering so if we set that to eighth note
it's quite an interesting base. There are a few other things we need to talk about. We need to talk about layering bases. So let's create a new MIDI track. Why have my volume controls disappeared yet again? There they are. And I want the sends as well. Thank you, that's what I want to see. Let's mute that one. Let's get back to the trusty operator. So if you split, if you think of the, the base in two layers, one is the sub, that is the rumble, that's the, the frequencies that's going to make everything shake if you run this on a big system. But that may not come across in less than adequate speakers when it comes to producing bass frequencies. But you can help the brain to understand that there is bass going on by having upper harmonics. And you can split those into two parts. So if we make, let's make a bass that to start with is going probably to sound pretty thin. We make a, let's just go back here and we, I'm just going to put some notes out. It's not so important what they are. Quite a boring pattern. But we make this, let's make this harmonically rich. Let's pick a, a that's uh, what am I trying to do here a base with maybe where we have some distortion another way of modulating is obviously using the shaper uh, MIDI shaper which is triggered by the a MIDI input but it creates more like an envelope style thing that you can use to modulate and you can draw some interesting shapes here or you can click the random button to generate shapes let's set that to remote and then we map that to to maybe the drive wet of the drive but we want that to be Maybe we need a bit more variation in here. Take another one, change that to remote. Let's make that more harmonically rich, but maybe there are some frequencies that we are not going to want. So let's do a high pass on that one. This will allow us also to push the bass out in the stereo spectrum, because if you're playing this on a a larger system you generally want to have the lower frequencies in mono because otherwise it will sound a lot less defined but the upper frequencies we can keep You have two options now. For To make this easier, actually we're going to keep it all in the same channel. So I'm going to pick these things that we have here and I'm going to group them. 
So we have our layer here with the top end, which we can spread out in the stereo spectrum and we can maybe add some reverb to this even. Let's do the hybrid reverb. get some more design elements in here. This is no exact science regarding this part with the reverb, etc. I'm just trying to make a bass with a bit of variation in it. and I'm changing this part of the rather than the uh, convolution part if you haven't looked into this reverb you should it's amazing so you saw this blend button you can also use this thing here because there's basically two types of reverbs in here. Convolution reverbs, which is mimicking uh, different spaces and different types of reverbs. So in this case, it's set to a spring reverb. And if I turn it all the way to that side, it's this part, which is using algorithms to synthetically reproduce uh, a reverb. And here are the different algorithms it's set to quartz at the moment. I want to cut a little bit more low end out of this, I think. So take the EQ and let's cut it here at 200. And let's maybe add some, now I'm going on a little bit of a detour, I'm spending too much time on trying to design an interesting bass. Resonator, repitch. Uh, do we maybe want to have some... face a flanger on this part. But as you can hear, this is not much of a bass at the moment. So here is where the doubling comes in. We're going to choose a much simpler tone that can sit underneath. We can take a wavetable, for example. And you can hear there's much more low end now. And we can take, maybe turn that down a little and this we can keep in pure mono. So we have the upper part here, which has got lots of stereo effects on it, but you can get so you can shape that a bit. Let's talk about this reverb again. When you send stuff off to this reverb, even though sometimes you happen to send some low frequencies, but this is 
pushing it out in the stereo spectrum, which in theory needs in most cases, it means in most cases you don't want that to, the low frequencies to be in stereo. So on that return channel, just for a bit of cleaning up housekeeping, we cut, let's cut everything under 200. do one of our power six here again most of them are nothing but every so often it's going to send the bass off to the return channel bass it sounds like I don't know club music and then you can throw out all the conventions and just start messing everything up by using a distortion that's not really messing that's not really throwing out convention Distortion on bass is so common, it makes me cry. The splitting thing works quite well on this one in terms of making a clean sound. If that's what you're after. There are two things, two more things that I want to touch on before uh, we finish this video. Well, let's go to the... Should we do another meld? That's fine. We do another meld. And now we are going to do, let's do a two bar loop. And we're going to introduce two different things. One is glide, which is interesting for bass uh, to create a little bit of, um, I don't know, listen to it. This is going to sound pretty poor for now, but that's we just have to we just have to live with that unfortunately. Now let's follow our convention. We just take a note and 
we make a get the rhythm right first. Let's set that to mono. So we copy that. Pretty dull bass line, but let's introduce triplets. So if you right click on the grid here, you can uh, spice this up a bit by enabling this triplet function. And let's choose eight notes uh, for the last two quarter notes here. We put in some triplets. Let's spread some of these out and then we're going to change them. to 16th notes. And then we're going to introduce some glide. Where's glide on this thing? Can you not do glide? What a bummer if I drive. There must be a glide function, surely. There probably is, but I don't know where it is because I have not Glissendo. It's Portamento, that's Glide, isn't it? And it seems to work fairly well up to about 100 milliseconds. So because I've had some triple triplet action. Oh, I could actually mention another thing you can do to get out of the loop. It's something that I do quite often is if you take scale and you pick the scale that you've chosen, which is D minor in this case. So we pick minor and we set it to D and then we take random and that needs to sit before the minor scale. That's important. And then we set it quite likely, it's about a third chance that it will pick a different note than the one that you have picked. So that means that every time this loop plays, it 
it will probably be slightly different that some nodes will be replaced with something else. And we also want to set this, in this case, you can play around with this to be bidirectional. So if it picks a new, if it's going to pick a note that you have not chosen, that it picks a random note, you can choose add is just going to be a note higher than the ones you've chosen. Sub is below and bidirectional. It can be either a lower note or a higher note. So here again, now I'm spreading this out in the stereo spectrum and therefore we might want to cut out the lowest frequencies and then do that layering again. Let's try that with this. So we're sort of combining all the things that we've done on the other bass lines for this one. So let's take our parsec and we're going to just create a little bit of too fast. Create a new random pattern and we can do it. Do both filters separately. can also maybe because we want to get some of the higher frequencies out of this so we can squash this a bit with an OTT we need a filter here at the end and let's take out the lows. MIDI map those. That's a shame. Thank <laughs> you. 
Let's put the filter last. And as we have this in a group, we need to double this with something low. So we take another melder maybe. Okay, that was a, a random rant on bass lines. This is not official music theory. These are just some of my thoughts on writing bass. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you feel like you can sponsor this channel, that would be very much appreciated. There is a link to my Patreon in the description. You will be able to grab this example file if you want it. But there's also loads of other downloads, gigabytes worth of sample libraries. There's also the Parsec Max for Live device, among lots of other Max for Live devices. There is a whole treasure trove of things to explore there. Um, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.